Children fail to develop adequate reading because of different processing deficits. In my opinion, these different subtypes of reading disability can be explained best within the interactive model of reading development. In 1987, David Rummelhart was the first that I know of who introduced the idea that reading is not either top-down or bottom-up, but it's a synergism of lower-level and higher-level processes. And while this diagram may look a bit complex, Hopefully, my interactive reading model explains a little bit better how reading develops first from the lower level processes of phonological awareness leading to decoding and logographic or orthographic awareness, which leads to recognition of sight words and pieces of words. If those are in place, as well as understanding meaning, which is simple semantics and how words fit in sentences, which is syntax, then accurate and fluent reading develops. All of those processes are essentially well developed of the same size, you might say, and if that's in place, invariably the kids will comprehend and they will enjoy reading. However, what happens with kids who are dysphonetic? These are kids who have a phonological deficit which I have depicted by drawing an extremely shrunken phonologic box. These are kids who are in preschool, could not say baseball, say it again, but they didn't say ball, couldn't count the syllables they heard or blend the sounds. If they read, they read by sight or by figuring out pieces of words like prefixes, suffixes, and roots. There are semantic and syntactic systems are intact. However, because of the phonological deficit, they read inaccurately and do not enjoy reading. On the other hand, dysorthographic readers overly invest in phonological awareness. You can see that I have highlighted both the phonological box and the shrunken logographic orthographic box because I really think that their central deficit is not just the inability to see words as sight words or to figure out chunks of words. It's also this over-reliance on decoding from beginning to end of each word over and over. And because they are accurate and slow readers, they will sometimes have trouble with uh, understanding what they've read but their central deficit is not comprehension. It is, in my opinion, this over-reliance on phonics. On the other hand, we do have kids who are just fine decoding words, who recognize words on sight, who can take them apart by meaning, and yet when they get done reading accurately, fluently, and with expression, they don't understand what they've read. And these are kids who have deficits in the semantic and syntactic processes. So overall, all of these lower level and higher level processes need to be in place in order to have accurate and fluent reading that leads to enjoyment. And deficits in one or more of them will compromise their ability to become good readers. So what happens to struggling readers in stage one? Stage one is the accuracy stage where kids begin to decode. They learn sight words. They are spelling according to how words sound at this point. So was is very often spelled as W-E-Z. Said is often spelled as S-E-D. This is usually late kindergarten to beginning first grade. What's happening with dysphonetic readers is because they lack those underlying phonological awareness skills, they can't decode and they can't spell by sound well. On the other hand, the little dysorthographic readers at this stage are locked into decoding. They don't recognize words on sight. They decode the same word over and over, but you always know what they're trying to write even if it's misspelled because their misspellings are very phonetic. What happens to struggling readers in stage two fluency is depicted here. In the fluency stage, which happens in second and third grade, decoding becomes automatic. 
the speed of reading increases and kids move into the spelling by pattern stage where they understand that the sound k can be spelled in different ways. At this point, dysorthographic readers are still glued to print. They're still slow. They're still not automatic because they're decoding over and over and they're still spelling by sound. On the other hand, the dysphonetic readers have kind of given up on trying phonics. They've learned a little bit of it, but not enough to write good phonetic equivalents for misspelling the words. So they're usually inaccurate, but faster reading. They want to get in and get out because they don't know how to decode anyway. So they read and spell by sight. And if they don't know how to spell it from memory, it's not going to be spelled correctly. Let's spend a little bit of time talking about why automaticity or fluency of reading is so important. The ability to read quickly as depicted by the schematic that shows a slow college reader, a fair college reader, and a good college reader, and how much they can consume in reading in a week, a month, a year and 10 years really tells the story of the lack of knowledge the kids will have if they continue to try to read those who are slow readers. But what happens with lacking automaticity is it influences the amount of reading. Kids who can't read well aren't going to spend much time doing it. It influences their motivation. So those who are slow and non-automatic are going to decrease in their willingness to try it. There's also very high correlation with comprehension. A one-minute curriculum-based assessment of words read accurately is very indicative of what a student is going to do on a much longer comprehension test. So what profile does your struggling reader fit from looking at the areas, the processes in which your student is struggling, you will be able to develop a, an individualized plan that will help them to develop the processes that they need to become accurate, fluent readers who enjoy reading. For inf information about interventions for dysphonetic and dysorthographic readers, click on this website.